Hello, YouTube. We're back with another LCS VOD review. Uh, we've got Dignitas versus FlyQuest, the match that was hyped up and was buzz killed like no one else by FlyQuest with a very, very, very dominant 2-0. Um, thanks so much for tuning in on YouTube. I really appreciate it. If you guys like the comment, uh, please feel free to think about giving me a like, comment, and or a subscription. And if you guys want to tune into the uh, live streams of these, live on Twitch, I record these live on twitch.tv slash cubbyxx, and I also interact with chat. I can take some questions. We go from there. Uh, so with that said, let's dive into game one of this. I'm trying to use my Steam Deck more as I have it. All right. Uh, so Dignitas for me, uh, this is the more interesting game. Because I, I feel like Dignitas needed the lane swap, and they did so successfully in this game. Uh, they're taking the Leona early on. Uh, this was an interesting thing to me, because um, I, I think that right now, like, a pretty dominant core that I'm seeing in a lot of these games is Corky, Ezreal, Leona, Zyra. Like, the, the theory of this is that we can run Corky, Ezreal. We have a massive spike on two items with Miramana. And then it's impossible to get through Zyra, Leona to get to these two marksmen and actually kill them, right? So, I, I kind of understand Leona first pick from that aspect. That said, I think Leona comes from her own problems where she can be really kited. Now, I will say that with Dig, these are two of the champions that, for me, are actually okay against Leona. Uh, Senna lanes can be punished early, but like later on, you feel pretty terrible playing against Senna's Leona. So, I I'm kind of okay with this. What ended up happening, though, is that we have Callista for Masu, and that gets taken away in Game 2, because Callista ended up being really good against Leona. Uh, Corky, Tristana, Handshake was each game of the series. And we take our AP Jungle Champ of Choice in Brand, and it's responded to with Talia. Uh, now, to be fair, I, I think that Brand actually provides some decent value here. And I think that very much, like, the theory I have with Zyra and Leona somewhat applies to Brand Leona as well. We're always able to proc Leona passive. And we have someone that can, A, engage and set up Brand, and B, also peel for Brand. Because keep in mind, Leona's peel is really, really good. Um, so I, I was okay with that. I do think that Talia made things a little bit harder for... Uh, like, these champs as well, which I like. And Talia, like, for me, the thing that's good into Brand is uh, pick and poke. Talia can create pick with her wall. We have a little bit of poke and more pick potential here. So I was okay with that from FlyQuest. I think this is the first time the Blippo's gotten Renekton so far this split. Um, it was banned in the next game. This is a very good champ for him. I was kind of down with a Poppy answer. Uh, it's not great for lane. But, I again, I, I figure, like, okay, Dig's going to lane swap with all this. And that's okay. So, yeah. Um, that being said, let's move forward. And it's one thing to like solve lane swaps. I think the like for me, lane swaps are valuable when there are games where it's valuable to dodge out in the first few levels of laning. And if you look at the comp that Dig has here against what FlyQuest has, the only lane that's okay level one through three is this one. Like this lane, their strongest one through three. And so if you're able to dodge out on that and get these guys there on even footing, I feel like that's worth it. So again, I was down for the Dignitas lane swap, and I was kind of frustrated that FlyQuest didn't scout this at all. I still think they're decently effective. Yeah, so Blippo sees bot top. This is going on. Now, I, like, Inspire, like, keep in mind, he wastes time here. He wants to go check his wraps, like, oh, are they doing that side of the jungle? And, yeah, they were. So, uh, like, this is advantage Dignitas everywhere. Like, they set Inspire behind. Like, this is a good lane swap. I think it's what their comp needs. It was a smart move from them. Also, for the record for chat, I, I did see these games. I was practice casting these games with Grapes. Uh, shout out to Grapes, by the way. He does really, he works really hard in Tier 3 and does good stuff and is, is a great guy. We didn't talk too much baseball during our practice cast. He also put up with me tweeting a little bit during it too, so you know I wasn't as focused. I'm gonna multitask a little bit. Uh, of course, we have the bot lane get a little bit more push for FlyQuest, as they are uh, they don't have the tur same turret resistances to deal with. So you're trading two points for one, but uh, oh wait, I really like this from Busio. Look, look what Busio does here. He actually pulled this wave so that the next wave dies to the turret. 
So I I, had a, I actually didn't see that. That that's a really big win now for FlyQuest on this lane swap. I th I think that's a really nice adaptation from Busio. I didn't catch that. Um, that's really nice. Uh, Inspired loses this camp to Spico, which is like again Spico's up a little bit. He already has a base in, and he's uh, up a camp Not on Inspired now. Like you said, Cummy. So, like, that's this is quite good for Spika in his game. Uh, Bot Bogan, thanks for the follow. So Spika doesn't have anything to do on the map right now. This was his timer to go gank. That said, I do want to uh, give props to FlyQuest. And keep in mind, part of that wave that they killed off is, like, actually a factor here. They got one more wave under the turret that Sven and Isles weren't able to get, and Isles is level 3. And this is still a strong spike for FlyQuest. They have a favorable base. Masu applies both, uh, or all three Callista passives on enemies. And I really like what Masu does here. This is small, guys. So, I, like, obviously, he sidesteps the first E. Shit, sorry. Yeah, so, like, that's a nice sidestep. And Busio was there to answer, too, with a nice Q. So, that's well played. This is all very well played. But look, I, I love what he does here. He gets around the minion. So, like, he can't get EQ'd and Spika calls off the play. Then he cleanses. Doesn't burn his flash. He doesn't need to. Renews the E slow there. And then they get Isles. That was really, really well done by Busio Masu. This is too much from Spika. They don't have control over the wave. Again, this is Spika's time to look. I think that what Spika can slash should do is if this is his angle. And again, I want to give props to FlyQuest in the bot lane. They dropped a ward. See this ward? Drops in the corner. This ward is still up. Who dropped this ward? I think Masu dropped it as he was basing. Yeah. So Masu dropped this ward in the corner as he was basing. This spots out any land ganks from Spika. You guys see the one I'm talking about? It's a little bit hard in the over there right now. It's right here. So that ward... Still alive. It would have spotted the Spika land gank. That's really smart. I, th this is the timer where Spika has no camps up on his side of the map. That, that's like a high key. That's, that's really, really good understanding of the game. I know that Masu just threw it down like when he based just out of range, but I, I feel like that provided some good value. So, well done. Okay, so now we return to standard lanes. And FlyQuest are up. Bot. Good job, youngins. They're up top. I also want to say that, um, Bwipo, you got to wave in and he saved his TP on the base. This is going to be significant later. Because because he walked back with double longsword, he actually bullies the poppy out and gets the Krish to burn his TP before him. Uh, and I really like what Inspire does here. So I feel like this was an overcommit from Dignitas. First off, I can't see this timer on the redeploy. Zen, okay, it was a base from uh, Busio and Masu, right? Busio uses this timer to walk mid. Isles is coming to answer. He's late. Inspired is there as well. They get Jensen flash. It's a really good handshake from Busio. It forces the flash. It almost gets the W. So now you have an opening with Licorice basing and TPing back and mid basing and TPing back to do the grubs. Dignitas sent everyone for these grubs. I'm not exactly sure why. It's not like someone has flash down to punish. Inspire takes two and they leave. And then Masu gets solo bot lane. So for me, this was an overcommit from Dig. And Zven spends a lot of time where he's not based. Oh, no, he did base, he did base. But he based and walked straight there, right? He doesn't lose everything, but he loses some. And that, that is significant. Like, he's down 20 right now. Okay. So there's a quiet time in the map. What I do want to point out is uh, Inspire is up a little bit. Actually, I, I didn't see how Inspire get up a little bit. Hang on, I, I'm going to go back and see Inspired's game real quick. So he takes... 
Wolves, Gromp. That's it. Ah, Spika skipped over his two camps, so he's behind on cycling. Yeah, he's behind his two camps on cycling. Okay, another big thing about this game. So, uh, check the TP's top, right? Blipo kept his up. Nickerish doesn't. Nickerish has item advantage. What's going to happen, though, is that Blipo holds on to this TP for so long that he's going to TP back with a Phage and a Caulfields um, in time for the next Grub fight. And I, I really like this from Blipo, and it's something you can do with Renekton, where you are so strong in lane that sometimes you can just hold on until you get, like, a... You can port back with a massive spike. Bupa does that this game, and I think it was very impactful. Uh, given, like, this game's already pretty in FlyQuest's favor, but I think that how he used his TP and when he used it really helped FlyQuest further drive home their lead. Alright, so... Quad all ends Jensen, and he gets to stay for this wave because he won. He also has his jungler hovering around mid, and he's got two wards on his lane, so... He knows he can kind of hug bot side and be okay. Having said, bot lane is still kind of smashing here for FlyQuest. And Inspired finds a really nice flick in this van. He's able to just get four points. And this van's got a base, so they take turret on that. So like that kill that was bot, they turn it into an entire turret. And Inspired finishing his clear bot really helped them get knock down this first brick. So like, everything the FlyQuest could have wanted in this early game, they got. Alright, there's no play on quad. Spika is not able to deny these. Okay. Remember when I talked about Blippo's TP back? He has no TP, and look at look at the inventory now. And then look at the grub timer. We're 15 seconds away, and he burned his TP on the last wave. So this is like, like now he's going to dominate that lane. There's nothing Poppy can do to contest. He also, like, being low mana. And Poppy doesn't have TP to respond. So this, for me, was desperation from Dig. Like, Sven's not here, too. So, th this is like, like, because first brick fell, I just don't think that they, like, they only get to take what they can take. I think that they should have sent Mikarish back, tried to sneak one, and then walked out. I think that's okay from Dig instead. I mean, they get trapped. Mikarish dies. Nice handshake. End of the hostile takeover miss from Busio, but it did get a flash and zoned everyone. Nice combo, too, with the hostile takeover and the Weaver's Wall. That's quite good. And now we get to swap lanes, where, uh, I mean, the one positive here is that the bot lane is shoving back into Dignitas, but we get Masu and Busio into this uh, Tristana, where we can just rain Callista Qs and see if we hit or not. Yeah, gets Speak a Flash and gets a, gets a kill. And now we have Kaisa versus Corky solo mid. Not exactly what Kaisa wants right now, even if Corky is sitting on a lot of gold. It's actually, unironically, it's probably the best place that Kai's can be, even if Kai's is getting, like, down two levels and kind of getting railed. Wait. Wait, Dig just literally sacked two waves to reset this. I don't agree with that from Dig, by the way. I think of any, like... Yeah, this is, this is weird. What does Dig do here? What can Dig do here? They could have walked Kaisa up to pick up this top wave, but instead they just sent them both back and like they both just drop waves. <laughs> kind of hurts. So now we're at 4k gold for FlyQuest. So pretty thick. Yeah, unironically, I think that the best lane Kai's can be in is actually against Corky. I I'm kind of down for, like, this funnel Kaisa angle. I will say, though, that Tristana is losing levels on this. It's like, and Trist levels are really valuable. 
But you can't really look for plays on Corky either. I, that's that's the other tough thing. Like this first pick, Leona, they took a lot of picks that are good into Leona. I, I don't think Leona's good into anything in this comp. I, I don't usually play my I was a good player at this champion often, but when I did peak GM, I was two trick Brom Leona. Pretty much. I swear to God, my thresh was good, but the win rate does not say so. I'm able to speak with some authority, though, on that champ. And, I, I mean, I don't need to say I was good, actually, in the ladder to say that Leona's poor this game. Want to see Thresh come back? Watch some challengers. Because it's full fearless, we just have games where Thresh appears. And we have some good Thresh players. Like, Chime, Diamond, uh, Trevor were all Thresh players at some point. Like, pretty good ones, too. Oh, okay, so this is the one angle where things got a little bit hairy. I right, Jensen jumping in here was... Did he cancel two autos? He canceled one there. I think he canceled two autos. That's a cancel. That's another cancel. Oh, boy. I the one the LCS game I casted last year in spring I watched Bjergsen cancel two autos on Tristana too. Funnily enough, <laughs> so I I thought of that. Um, and the positive here is that Masu gets chunked by Sven, as Sven ulted in off screen, and Blippo instead of stopping the TP just elects the force. Masu's flash there is a little bit late. And he dies to Isles. Well played, Isles. But because Blippo's TP was just on quad, and quad was stronger, and they killed Jensen first, that's good. I do want to point out that Busio's alt here, it looks really troll. Like, Busio's alt looks very troll here. But it does cut Sven off entirely. So, like, they're guaranteed to go north, and they end up wrapping up these kills. So I was down for this. This was one of the funniest parts, too, of the game. And this game is officially over. Yeah, it canceled two autos. I mean, I don't think it's that big of a difference, but also maybe they kill quad them with Nicker. No, I mean. All right, so coming out of replay. We got a goon squad. Talk about being stuck between a rock and a hard place there for Jensen, huh? Huh? Freak would have been proud of that one. There's not much else to talk about here. Uh, I think that the Herald usage is good. They take a... Uh, they get an inner down before a dragon spawns. I'm 100% down with that. I think that's very clean. Everyone gets munched. That's a Baron. I mean, well played. Is there anything that... I, I honestly... Okay, I, I think this is okay from Dig. I really do. This game is so fucked. They actually find a combo onto uh, Corky, but Busio bought Mikhail's. And I really like this buy. When you're this far ahead, taking stuff like QSS, Mikhail's, just preventing comeback mechanics, like getting picked, preventing them from getting shutdowns, is really good. So I thought that was a smart buy from Busio. Dig didn't recognize it, and their, their play goes sideways. I, I was I was actually down for that look from Dig. I think that's more of a pro Busio play than an anti like oh Dig sucks play. You know like that game's cooked. I think it's one of the best looks that Dig can find. So I, it's it's a smart buy from Busio.
And there's a fight later on where it's actually kind of close because Busio's not in range with the Mikhails, so... Or was that a different game? Might have been a different game. We'll see. I think it was this one. Uh, we are playing three wins here as Flight Quest. I think that's fine this game. Renekton has a port. Uh, that said, he does. This is a good rotation for Flight Quest. So look at this. They get bot wave in. They cleared mid. They're going to shift top. And they're going to narrow up their approach. That's that's cool. That's chill. That's that's solid macro. And then bot wave gets in. Jensen has to catch. And they don't finish up the push. This was actually a little bit sloppy. I think Masu... Uh, Masu should have won mid there. Because they, they have three waves in. And they see Sven being low. I think Masu should have won mid here. They could have knocked this down in this wave. I don't know why he went long... I can't kind of understand being a long way. Like, they saw people showing, though. Ah, you know what? They, 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 they could be with that wave mid. Okay, 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 okay. Anyway, Inspired fucked off to take his own red buff, so... I, I would have preferred to see FlyQuest actually stick around and kill this as a team and then get their shit. Like, they could have based and redeployed. I feel like that's the end of the play. Oh, yeah, this is the point. So, Busio drops the most ambitious hostile takeover I've ever seen. They just really want the fight, guys. He's like, fuck your base, we want to fight. But he's not in range for the uh, Mikhails against quads, so they actually get quad here. So, again, like I, I feel like the pick on the quad, like the initial idea was good. There's no hostile takeover. They were camping the uh the port by the way. It's kind of funny. This is also funny that it kicks <laughs> Sven got the execute off, but the hammer from Poppy came out there. So Hexel falls. Yeah. The sound. Busio had a very nice game. This was a little bit trolls from uh, Sven. It's a pretty troll depth, but this game was over to be fair. So good game, one to fly quest. That was a bit one sided. Game two was much closer though, right guys? Okay. Um, I actually I think fly quest this draft. Like, I think we see some adjustments being made. Uh, first off, we have the Callista instead of the Karthus ban, and Karthus picked up immediately. Uh, Ezreal and Leon is fine, and that kind of means they get to split up like the um cores we've been seeing of like. Leona, like, Corky Ezreal, or Corky Ezreal, Talia, stuff like this. Um, Isles is so hot in this photo. That's cool. He's taken, unfortunately. Um, we have the mirror matchup being played by Quad versus Jensen, which, uh, true respect, you know, we just needed to find out who the better, better mid was, for sure. Uh, but I think that the Poppy here was unique, because I know it can be played in support in Leona, but... With the Cassante picked, I actually thought there was an angle where Whippo could have played this top. But they decided to split the map instead and pick the TF. So what ends up happening here, I mean, I think this is another game where lane swap should be considered from Dignitas. Like the... Ezreal should be able to outrange both Kai'Sa and Leona. And Poppy makes this a rather uninteractive lane. So like, unless you're going to flash Q uh, Poppy, like you don't really have kill threat. Um... I thought the Poppy top would have been actually been really nice to, like, hold the line. And then if you put an Alistar bot, like, I actually... I think that's also a really good setup for Dignitas... Or, uh, for FlyQuest. But they opt for the TF instead. Which does give you the ability to split and hopefully side lane into both Corky and Cassante. Your build does spike a little bit earlier as TF. And you have Trist, so a Grub Pryo is very high for FlyQuest. And this thing does melt Grubs. So, I, I thought this game was a lot about Grubs for FlyQuest. Also, I would consider a lane swap. I know the TF's level 1 is really strong, but I would consider a lane swap. Alright, they feed the ward over to Jensen. So he gets level 2 first wave now. I think that was a... I mean, I, I like that from Dig. Whenever you can do that, I, I, I'm a big fan. 
You love me better Need you now Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Where did Leo go here? Because when Leo leaves... Oh, they see Leo... Oh, so Alice goes to clear out that ward to signal that Speaker can come, and then uh, Poppy actually takes the trade. I like that. Inspire is able to wrap around, gets here first. So this crab is all his, and Italy goes to top crab. TP first coming out of Jensen. Quad goes for a different build. I've seen Quad go steel caps in these double marksman matchups. I do think that's the meta. I think I think you should go steel caps in these. Um, people like I do think that steel caps go a little bit of a longer way in solo lanes. And know we see double marksman matchups sometimes, but if you're able to get in the solo lane, I think it does go a little bit longer. My my thing here is that. The uh, one time that you can actually impact the TF Cassante matchup is around six. I was a little bit surprised that I didn't see Speak at any point try and flip his pathing to go for it. Because I think by not playing for that window, you're just accepting the feet in the top side. Like, if you're up top right now, I, I actually think that you might be able to flip the TF Cassante matchup in the next couple levels. But Speak is showing here, it gives away grubs for free. And there's no bot prio with, like, against the Ezreal to actually take the Drake. So the Drake gets a little bit delayed. I, they end up taking it, but there's more contest from FlyQuest, so they end up slowing down the plane. Oh, uh, the play. The Chris doesn't find the all-in. Busio does have to burn Flash. Did people actually hype the series up? Yeah, Dig made a, a rather good video to promote it. Uh, Crab goes over to Spico. I think the quad gets a little bit too aggressive here. Like, this jump in from quad is kind of ballistic to me. I mean, that, that is the Yona. But FlyQuest are able to get out. Yeah, it, it was a good video, Marikouf. Yeah, it turns out the people that FlyQuest did not keep did not beat the roster the FlyQuest kept. And unfortunately for them, I know this match probably meant more, but it was not close. So we are losing every lane but mid, uh, which, I mean, that's chill if you're FlyQuest. This Tristana for me is like a scaling option in sides. Quad goes for a vamp, actually turns it into a Bork, which I was a bit surprised about. I was expecting a Kraken, but it was indeed a Bork. I wonder what kind of math they've done in terms of HP breakpoints there. Because you are against the Mogs, Leona, and Cassante, so it's not like it's terrible, but... I do think that the vamp in the lifesteal is very good in this matchup. I, I'm always down for that. Caps goes uh, vamp scepter in this matchup from what I've seen. And I think it's theory and that's sound. It's a little bit of old school league theory. Vamp used to be a very popular item for ADs back in uh, early seasons. Yeah, this is just... So if Isles bases... Oh, I guess that word would have seen him. When was Isles last spotted here? I mean... If this ward, so this ward's here, if it's not here and Masu's here, if you base here on the other side of the wall, you aren't spotted. This ward would have spotted him, so I won't bully him for that. But Isles not basing with uh, Spica is the mistake here. I think that, or I, I mean, he wants to get bot, but like, then he decides to base, because I think the call is Grubs. Yeah. So he's got to base with Spica, and the fact that he didn't base with Spica, he gets caught. Bummer. Lack of bot prio, no try brush prio, and you get you get caught. Yeah. Ah, uh, this was this was sad. I actually want to watch this again. So I think Zven tries to W flash. Yeah, Zven tries to W flash. 
So you, you can see it with the, the Kai's animation. I think that's why Sven's tilted in the camera. Because if he flash autos, it's at least a one for one. But because he tries to W flash, the W is delayed. Or he flash Ws, he doesn't W flash. And he flashes in the Mystic Shot. I do think that I'm okay with Sven flipping this. I think that it was close enough where it's kind of acceptable. But Masu played this really well. Uh, he didn't miss a single Q. So, yeah. I think that's why Sven was tilted, though. Because, like, he, he, he knew he fucked up the play. It wasn't like, oh, no, I died. It was like, oh, I fucked that up. Because if he, if he flash autos, it's at least a one for one. This is well played from Busio. Like him taking a deep angle. I think Vicarish would have had to stick it out there if he wanted to get out. And then I think I think the reason why he E's when he does is because Vicarish is a boppy player. Like you're expecting to not E until the double Q goes off. But I think Busio kind of bluffs him here, if I'm being honest. Because you, you can go unstoppable at any point, right? Uh, but he does it after all this to try and catch the gold card, but then Busio still has the W up. Uh, so I, I thought Boosie actually kind of cooked in there. This is well played. Only road, only one that I, I've ever known. Yeah, he tried the W. I, I think it was a flash W. I think if he W flashes or like gets over the Mystic Shot, it's better. Oh, that one hurt though. Shout out to the Dignitas manager for following his player's deed there. You know, same vibes. That's good signs for energy in the building. I don't know why I'm shouting that out. It was, it, it was kind of funny, though, seeing both do it at the same time. That's a bummer. Like your analysis of that Sven play? Yeah, I mean, it's, I think I'm right. I, I didn't hear that be uh, brought up. He had Kaisa passive stack, so anyway, that play's over. This map's still really bad. Uh, as you can see, Blippo uh, doing the TF thing. <laughs> I I fucking despise this T AD TF champ, man. I feel like they took all the skill out of this champ. I, I feel like TF's a problem champ anyway, because uh, like I thought his I think that AP TF his Q is it's too easy for TF to get farm as AP TF, which is why I think he's a problem champ. But oh my god, like I, I I despise this TF champ. I I don't really know what Isles can do here. Can't wait for tank TF. So Zamudo uh, played uh, Wormog's TF, and it was a really good game for it. I was a big fan. Ooh. So we have a play attempted on the side lane on the quad. Which I like. It's a way. They have to do something like this. He does eat a spear. That's nice. Flashes out. He doesn't even have Butcher Shot up yet. Oh! Okay, I think it's the one positive play that we actually have. But this shutdown goes over to Isles. Yeah, this is a nice turn. I, I appreciate Dig looking for plays on the other side of the map. It's the only choice they have. They played this well. Really good catch into Inspired. Inspired walking in there was a little bit greedy. Good find from Isles. Yeah, and Italy's not doing well in the LCS. I, I was legitimately like, huh, do we Lilia this game? It was not. As long as the Dig goes hardest. 
I'm actually, I'm kind of waiting for people to bust out Echo. I, th I think at some point we're going to see Jungle Echo. You don't clear as hard, but at least you're an AP option, and you can fuck with stuff like Karthus. I really like Echo as a champion. But I, I think that Echo was like, there's too much shit in the game where um, Echo gets CC'd. I, I think like in a Leona meta, like, oh my god, if you're playing Echo against Leona, like you just want to die. Gonna see E before Echo? I wouldn't, that wouldn't surprise me. Anyway, uh, there's not much else to talk about here. I really like how Busio taxied Spica. And then we're just one-shotting people because we're TF and we get to throw all of our cards. Arrow drop, we see Dig on that side of the map, and this game is cooked. I mean, I gotta say, like, given the current power rankings, I think if you ask most people, the top three teams right now are TL, Fly, and C9. And I think Dig would probably be the next team outside of that. For Where, like, people, most people had Dig. This is really Dignitas' chance to crack that. And man, this game was, like, not close. I, I mean, it really feels like right now I know who's going to Worlds, you know? I, if we started playoffs tomorrow, it's like, do, like... Do FlyQuest, TL, and C9 all make worlds, yes or no? I, I feel like the, the, the odds are in favor of a yes there. SR runs the gauntlet. That'd be unreal. Keep in mind, guys, a top two seed matters a lot. I, I think C9, Fly, and TL, Fly, or um, TL, C9 are going to be the two series that matter the most. Because if you're top two seed, you only have to win one best of five to make it to Worlds. Oh my god, Masu is just... Masu gives zero fucks. He at level 13, he's got a Vol Miramana and a Caulfields. He's going towards Shoujin. And he's like, yeah, I'll do it myself. Which means he's got a team behind him, but uh, still he's cooking. This game is over. Dig got a little bit of Astro Boston. Blast you were saying yesterday? What were you saying yesterday, Dr. Professor, Mr. Sergeant? All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning into my VOD review. Uh, that would be FlyQuest versus Dig. If you guys want to uh, catch more, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, also to twitch.tv slash and my socials, which are below.